Welcome everyone to Modern Mist Machine, to Steam Next Fest. I love Steam Next Fest, it's very exciting to be here. We are showing off the new live demo that we've got. Uh, we might have seen it at Lunaricon that happened a little earlier, but of course Steam Next Fest is bigger and better. And also this demo also has some new stuff like a bunch of localized languages and, and, and some fixes and that kind of stuff. Uh, my name is Harry Mitchell, I'm the community manager at Blazing Griffin. I'm joined by Justin, who's the head of games. Say hello, Justin. Hey. And Romano. Hello. Say hello, Romano. Now, Romano, can you just describe to everyone what your role is at Blazing Griffin and what you do for Modern Mystery Machine? Because we're going to be talking about it a lot. Uh, I'm a designer and writer on Murder Mystery Machine. So I have been doing some designing of the puzzles and writing of the episodes. Wonderful. And Justin, D, uh, you're the, the the big boss, so you can oversee all that kind of thing, right? <laughs> one of the one of the big bosses. So I'm one of one of two at Blazing Griffin Games. We've got got two bosses, myself and Neil. Uh, and uh, Neil, who unfortunately can't join us, he was head production and producer um, on uh, Murder Mission Machine. Um, and uh, I worked on things here and there from a, from a directional uh, point of view, from a review point of view, um, narrative and design, um, but leaving the, the nitty gritty to uh, good folks like Romano. Absolutely. Well, that's wonderful. Well, today we're going to be playing a bit of the demo. Uh, you can play it yourself right now. If you're watching this live, you can download it and play it yourself, but you can watch us play along. We're going to be chatting a little bit about the wonder of detective games and how to make a detective game and all the the horror of of, of that indeed um and yeah i mean there's we're going to talk a little bit about detective stories about the mind map system we have a little bit about how to write those kind of interrogation questioning dialogue and all the options that you have and all the kind of ethical rumbles that go on towards the end of the game in this uh, story through all this episodic so uh originally uh, let's talk a little bit about what Murder Mystery Machine is. It's uh, isometric, it's it's episodic based, but not released in that way. You've got the full season out just now for once the game will be out. And you essentially, describe it to me, Justin, elevator pitch, what's Murder Mystery Machine? Uh, here, I should read the, the, the store page text. <laughs> Join the district <laughs> crime agency in this isometric modern noir deduction thriller. Explore crime scenes in complex dioramas, organize your evidence effectively, and blur the lines between right and wrong to present your case. Do you have what it takes to be a real detective? So in that description, there are a few things that kind of were the core principles of, of the game. The last thing uh, the last statement is actually probably the most important one for us. You have what it takes to be a real detective. And we really looked at this game as a, a point of how can we uh, translate um, uh, the detective experience into games? Because in uh, quite a few mystery games, um, detective games, adventure games, there is a... Um, you do lots of things which detectives don't do. Um, for example, jigsaws, um, or <laughs> you know, needle needle in a haystack. Okay, there there are some you know magnifying glass. I guess detectives have magnifying glasses. But looking at modern detective, or actually over the past hundred and fifty years um, of detective novels, detective media, um, more recently films, TV, detective work is about deduction can you piece this together and whenever you talk about a mystery you talk about uh the events of the of the crime the people involved in the crime um the things that you found and then the real juicy part is piecing that together um and leading going on this this trail uh, of investigation so that's what we really wanted to um distill and it started out as scene investigation in terms of looking at a, a scene, and this was part of our original kind of concept arting and design process, um, where uh, our lead artist Sean painted a scene where a, a murder had taken place. And the question was, what do you think happened here? Can you look at the various pieces of evidence to describe the story of, of, of what happened? Um, which was really kind of, um, again, representing this core principle of the game which is not necessarily on um, 
is solving, you know, like I said, a, a jigsaw puzzle, but actually, you know, it's inherently narrative. And we have this kind of, uh, again, a philosophy where we want players to be a participant in the story. You know, how can we have participatory storytelling in our games, in our gameplay? And we want the player themselves to just to construct the story because that's, again, that's what the detective experience is. It is creating your own story. And, and, you know, we can all kind of name our favorite shows where there will be the detectives who, who will, in his final denouement or in his final uh, words, he will go back to the start and say, well, you know, this is what you did and this is where you tripped up and this is how I caught you. So that uh, storytelling is an integral part of detective work, which we wanted the players to be involved with um, while you are piecing together the elements of crime. And that's kind of where, um, well, that's what the, the game is. Um, through our mind map system, you are telling the story. Now, it's it, it then transcended just um, scene investigation because... All, uh, alongside scene investigation, detectives do a lot of other things um, and they look at different elements of crime. So we, we started to integrate that uh, into our process and there are some, some scenes which have very little uh, scene investigation at all and, and are more dialogue focused, but still bringing that dialogue back into our mind map so you can uh, uh, incorporate that, that evidence into your own, own story uh, of the crime. Uh, sorry, that wasn't really a summary of what the game is. <laughs> no, but that, that, it's what I guess the heart of the game is about. It's less about um, the grumbling around and, and punching people and, and doing that. It's more about actually doing the work and getting the evidence and, and pitching a story. But talking about the game, do you want to actually jump into the game and, and, and sure. see what it looks like? Because So for the demo, how much does the demo show in itself? Is it is it an episode? Is it part of an episode? Is it like a one crime scene? Uh, so this is a few crime scenes from episode one, uh, and we're just loading up here, um, and we'll show the the intro. Um, this is a a nice intro done by our friends uh, ISO Design uh, here in Glasgow, um, and also this is an opportunity to talk about um, some of our uh, TV inspirations. Um, so the game is broken up into to eight individual episodes, all of which will be available. Uh, at launch on Steam, um, each of which you have this intro. The first two scenes uh, are the same um, for every intro into the episode, and then this uh, scene where we have the bar now, that changes every episode. So we really like this kind of foreshadowing, um, which is, has been done uh, in some of our favorite uh, shows. Yeah, it feels, yeah, feels kind of like, yeah, kind of like a TV serial show where you're like, oh, this is getting into this kind of big chunk of a, of a, of a story. Um, that was really. I thought that was really cool, um, because it, it because of the way it's it's isometric nature. I guess like the locations are really really important in this game. The way all the different stories, uh, all the way, different locations are kind of this very storytelling element, and they look very pretty. I will say that they look very pretty from um, from my perspective. So I guess these very striking places and the setting is also a key part. Would you would you agree with that? Yes. Uh, yeah, and and it was. Uh... You know, art played an integral part in terms of of crafting the overall story, gameplay, um, atmosphere was a, a very large component. And you know, as I said in that first uh, kind of scene where we talked about what do you think happened here and how that informed our design. Um, similarly, it just exploration of um, various isometric scenes informed our story, informed the the types of um, of places that detectives uh, might go. Now we're in the the police lab in the this kind of grungy basement um, of Police Plaza, looking at these kind of uh, cold cases, and we're speaking with Nate in the cast. Do you want to talk a little bit about these two characters, about how these were kind of developed and what we you, you do with those characters? Remind me, feel for the a bit about like uh, what you like about Nate and cast and how those characters develop over time. Yeah, leave this oh. uh, one to Romano. I wasn't there for the birth of the main cast, but I was there for the ending because I wrote the last episode. And so I had to go back and, and kind of see how their relationship developed over the course of the, the series and um, season for doing it American style. Uh, and 
yeah, they they kind of have a really cold start, and then you know things things were up like most uh, buddy cop things do. And uh, what's nice is that as things are warming up, I can't do, I'm trying not to do spoilers. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I, I will say like what, <laughs> it's about it's, to it's, blow the thing. It's my it, it, the one thing I do is is I look through all the kind of reviews comments, and a lot of people say it's like this Nate guy's a prick, man. <laughs> like, to the very start, but I guess you can you you learn to that's you need to have that kind of character of detective stories, um, and they kind of you kind of grow on them, um, and they you get a little bit more of what their characters like. So. Uh, I guess, how do you develop leaking those kind of character details over these seasons? Do you just go, oh, I was born here, and here's what the heart tragic backstory, or do you kind of try and leak it in elements and cutscenes? How how does the character like that develop over time? I guess I think in the beginning, you get very little information about Cass and they, like you know they're cops, <laughs> and over the course of the story, you, you we only ever really hint. At where their personalities come from, it would be nice to go in, in a sequel to go and explore uh, their backstories and why why is Nate the way he is. And um, I also wrote episode one where Nate is really cold in the beginning. So, I, but I tried to make it, tried to justify uh, his uh, prickliness by saying he was frustrated and he used to be a big dealer in the DCA and. And so there's just hints of what where that went wrong. I mean, you do find out a little bit about um, what's going on there, but again, I'm in danger of dropping spoilers. So I, I'm I think. Up. Well, well, yeah, let's let's talk about the game. What what are we seeing right now? What where where are we right now? So this, this is our first uh, scene um, where Frank Daniels has been shot. That's not a spoiler since it's the first scene. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. Um, and it acts as our tutorial, and this is just showing a bit of the tutorial on uh, linking um, evidence. This shows our, our mind map um, where we see that Frank Daniels, um, he's dead, big skull and crossbone. There's blood in the carpet, he's got a bullet <laughs> wound, there's a 9mm uh, um, shell casing uh, nearby, and we should look around for some clues. Mm -hmm. um, I, I would say just on on the characters, I think, you know, there, there's a reason why two characters uh, work in detective shows. There's a lot that you can do uh, story-wise, but then there's a lot of things that you could do gameplay-wise um, with two characters. Um, Nate acts as um, a key uh, gameplay uh, element as a uh, kind of a deduction representation. So throughout the game, you'll be linking things together to make a deduction um, that, you know, we can, for example, um, deduce that uh, Frank Daniels was shot. Um, and uh, now let's just link a, a few other things that the nine millimeter shell casing uh, links to to the gun, so we're we're pretty sure that the the nine millimeter handgun uh, was the. Um, sorry, I just need to organize my evidence a little bit. We'll uh, get to that later. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, I, I liked when I played Mission Mystery Machine that Nate was just kind of. It's good to have a buffer character to kind of talk to you about the case because if you just you on your own and you're just a solo detective. As yeah. a player, I might not really know what I'm doing, and kind of, I might, I'm on the right track. Am I doing this completely wrong? And going to chat to Nate, like, here's what I found, and it's like, oh, maybe we should do this next. It kind of puts you on a bit of a, a track, I guess. That's what I took from it. Yeah, yeah, um, exactly. You know, we we have um, the ability for uh, essentially the game and the designers to to uh, progress the story to to give you some feedback on on what you're doing, um, and it, it's also it does play a key part in in the overall uh story which is um you see the progression of relationship between Cass and nate and you'll also see one of these characters uh link in uh to the overall uh, uh hmm. mystery um as we go it gets personal it gets <laughs> personal uh that's great and i guess i want to talk about the the genre a little bit we, we say modern noir when it comes to it so what where did modern noir come from? Why modern noir? We, we hear the word noir said all of them in text, but like, what about that genre? What does it actually 
meanness aspect and how do you develop that kind of tone in a game and choose that tone instead of something more, I guess, uh, fantastical or, or wacky? So, um, you know, a big inspiration, I suppose, for, for the game as a whole and what we're trying to do, you know, as, as I've mentioned before, what were our favorite um, TV shows and um, a big part of this was putting players into the mindset of a detective. And we kind of, when we are imagining um, ourselves um, in the mind of a detective, we start associating that. You know, when you think of, you know, a, a city full of crimes to solve, um, it immediately has a slighter, uh, you know, darker feel to it. And I think there, there are a few different um, archetypal detectives, uh, let's say. You have the kind of art deco um, Hercule Poirot detective, you've got the Victorian Sherlock Holmes detective, you have the um, uh, with the, the 1930s PI, you know, where you have the uh, the lady in the red dress visiting the office, and then you have a slightly more modern um, noir detective um, mm -hmm. where you have uh, games like, uh, sorry not games, uh, shows like The Wire, for example, which was a big reference for us, and there's a certain atmosphere um, here and that we can um, speak to in a few different areas. It's a very evocative kind of uh, feeling when, you know, smoky jazz bars, um, there's almost, uh, you know, crimes waiting to happen. Um, so we thought it was a really nice visual style um, uh, as well as uh, gave, gave us a lot of um, leeway with storytelling, you know, rather than having to, you know, go back in time, look at the, the technology of, of the Victorian era for, for Sherlock Holmes. Um, we did want to set it with modern crime, uh, modern crimes, um, but still create that atmosphere of um, of a detective. I don't know, Romano, if, if you have any, any thoughts on that. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> <I> just kidding. <laughs> I guess when I'm writing, I try not to think too much about the genre, but yeah, certainly the setting helps with lots of things when you're writing it. Like, I guess. That's a good point about you know, uh, what to say in Victorian times because it just makes it so much harder to to uh, to write, I guess. Um, <laughs> if you do research and yeah. stuff, you know, it's, like, it's, <laughs> much, it's much easier <laughs> to be modern, modern day. Um, Although it's not, it's not, it's not present day though, is it? It's like the eighties. Yeah. Oh, good question. Don't, don't don't want to nail down a specific. Uh, specific uh, it seems kind of 90s because of the because of the computer and the, the, the they have. There's no phones, which uh, there's there's something about setting it in present day that kind of limits you as well. Because one of the good things about setting it in Victorian times is you can have magnifying glasses and you know mm -hmm. I don't know what they yeah. did did they send messages by carrier pigeon or something like. You, you, there's a, a nice aesthetic to things being a little bit older, like call phone boxes and. When you can do everything with your phone, there's just just, just something a bit less, um, I guess, exciting about it. Yeah. Well, when you, you've spoken a little bit about the kind of inspiration for the TV shows, you mentioned The Wire. Are there any other inspirations for detective shows or detective games you played or watched that you were like, this is the kind of the, the mood board for what we want to do for Murder Mystery Machine? Um, you know, we. we um... A couple of other references were um, uh, shows like True Detective and Mindhunter, um, and you know, I, you know, Mindhunter from a, a psychological perspective. And again, to kind of talk about the the time period and the technology, you know, I, I suppose this this chosen time period um, allowed us to have kind of modern crimes, and as Romano said, you know, without without phones but but really to try and get away from a uh, specific scene investigation uh, tools so we didn't really want people to come out with like a, a spray it with um, a fingerprint spray um, or get a get a UV scanner uh, to come around we wanted people to look at the story of the crime and deduce what happened and, and from that perspective Mindhunter I think was a was an interesting um, example. Also, you know, true crime um, uh, as well. Um, oh, I've, I've forgotten the name of the, the Netflix uh, true crime show. Um, 
but you know which one uh, yeah <laughs> um you know podcasts like serial there, there's something really interesting on uh essentially modern murder mysteries um and again keeping it quite uh story driven um maybe cerebral is not the right word but really looking at the connection of people the connection of events um uh, rather than specific bits of of, of um uh, technology focused gameplay i suppose from like an actual design of the game standpoint it does work better when it's all kind of uh paper and folders and connecting dots with with, with wire um then it is just doing a bunch of databases of people's details and forensic data um yeah that's great i think it, we're about time that we uh, move on a little bit and talk about um the mind map the evidence board uh, i have a lot of questions about that because uh, i wondered from justin if there was, was it always this way was it, was it always because there's a few different ways to do detective logging and unturning evidence like i know return of the obra din has that massive book where you kind of go through the different people that's i, I love that version of that uh, but it's not just in the logging of evidence it's how the player connects the dots and progresses in the game so <laughs> we'll probably get to remind that at some point um yeah. right now but um talk to me about the mind map about how it works how it's created um about, about how player plays have to organize themselves things like that um so uh the the mind map um you know it, it's it's not a, a new concept it's actually one that <laughs> You know, people people use outside of games a lot. Um, it's you know the inspiration from this was looking at pin boards in uh, again uh, our favorite TV shows. Um, you know the the kind of archetypal um, detective mind map is a uh, mind map of of suspects um, and how are these guys connected. Um, and there's a question mark over this guy. There's a uh, there's a low level guy here and a high level guy here. And you know, mind maps and, and detective work have, have kind of gone gone hand in hand um, uh, for quite a while. And it also adds a lot of flexibility um, again in terms of uh, storytelling. And this kind of goes into um, our, our connections. I'm just trying to get to an appropriate point in the game to, to start making some uh, connections and uh, oh. for a friend if you need help you know, it's, it's, <laughs> it's tough to solve these cases um, and I guess the thing I found really interesting was is in a way that a real mind map is that it's not always in this fixed organized place for you it just kind of places it and you have to figure it out on yourself like uh, Romano could you talk about how the player has to try and organize that chaos like when I played it there were things uh, that were just uh, there were like places that seemed related, but they were on opposite ends of my map. And I was like, I guess I should put that over here. But now that's really cluttered. Like, how does that? How did you have to design that so people have to try and use their actual brains to to organize it themselves? Yeah. <clears throat> so basically, you can't play this without paying attention. There's no way to just kind of spam through it. Although there are hints, you, you won't know what's going on. You really have to, like, in terms of. What Justin was saying there earlier about detectives don't solve jigsaws and like it's just almost like in some I'm not trashing other detective games like but certain some games about detectives are more like point and click adventures they're not technically detective games in that you are just going through a story and then there's a jigsaw so it's the puzzles aren't really related to the narrative whereas this the narrative and the puzzles are almost one so. For example, this conversation with Aideen that I'm looking at just now is going to throw up some things about uh, Nadine and Frank's relationship and uh, you'll get nodes on the mind map that are related to that and so like a real detective you'll have to think why does this thing about their why is this thing about their relationship relevant to this case and you know, the truth is it isn't in this specific example so you have to maybe as a player you'll want to say well non-pertinent stuff can go over here and then more relevant things can go over on this side or maybe you'll want to organize it more like i'll put people who are guilty i mean you can it's quite flexible for the player so they can do it however they want um and i guess like yeah the nice thing space. about yeah the, the nice thing about that is that I, I, the, 
the thing with a mind map is it's when you're well, the, the, for example the game is designed on mind maps so when I'm designing an episode I'll do it in a mind map and it's it's tricky to get what I think makes sense across to someone else so it's, it's sometimes good to just let the players see the information appear and then organize it themselves because it's it's basically this big display of information that I've kind of um, thrown at the player and if, if they can organize it themselves and it helps them to put it in an order that they understand it because mind maps are quite personal sometimes like you might not organize it or structure it the same way someone else might and then looking at it might not make sense looking at a finished mind map won't make sense to you maybe um, that you haven't made yourself um, sometimes you might connect things that other people might connect completely differently like uh, a romance might be related to a place rather than a person yeah. Um, yeah. and that can all link in different ways it must be tough to try and manage that kind of thing um, yeah so when I'm running past running uh, ideas for puzzles past Justin usually the first thing he says is what am I looking at <laughs> <laughs> to like, go through and explain it all yeah um Wonderful. And you mentioned about talking, to, we're talking to Nadine um, about uh, it's a, a possible affair, that kind of thing. Um, and I want to talk a little bit about that kind of interrogation and questioning dialogue. Now, we, we've seen this a lot in games. A lot of games have uh, like, like text options, this kind of thing. But now it's linked with understanding evidence, understanding what people are like and their motivations. What is it when, you, when, you, when you're starting an episode and designing an episode? How does dialogue work? How to design that dialogue to be not too obvious, not too vague, and have enough kind of player choice so they feel like they're navigating through their own investigation? It's a really, really tricky balance because it's hard. It's really hard. So I think, uh, I, I don't know if I've really got like a set way of doing this yet, but I think one way to do it is just to come up with the most straightforward version of events where it's just a conversation and you make that um, work with a, a mind map structure and then you're like okay this is too easy we need some red herrings um, but I, I don't think I've actually really done it that way so far I think I've more kind of it's been a little bit more natural where I've taken the, the story of a uh, uh, crime scene and kind of tried to kind of piece by piece figure out what what um, the next step might be for the detective and um, try and put myself in the player's shoes and think what would I be thinking at this point and always try and have a bit of a this seems like this seems like the path we're going to go down but then try and uh, subvert that so actually the player thinks they're going down one way but then there's overwhelming evidence that suggests another I mean for example here there's uh, we've got member of the gun lobby and angry about Daniel's views on handguns as mind map nodes there and spoiler they're they're <laughs> not correct they're like um red herrings but when you first start I think as a player I would be kind of leaning towards that because it seems kind of suspicious but then there's the introduction of other possible suspects and other motives and I think when you kind of are shown a lot of random not random but a lot of completely different options you, you start to just focus towards the evidence and you think okay well not all of these can be ready look, look at the actual evidence that's there and try and focus on what seems more the, the hope is that there's so much wrong stuff there that you've you really narrowed in on the stuff that makes sense um i guess a lot, of some times, of this. See, a lot of times when i'm playing a game i think that everything has an exact purpose. If I'm not using something, then I'm doing something yeah. wrong because clearly everything must have <laughs> some reason or else why would it be in the game? Why would someone build this thing if it's not? Uh, like, yeah, yeah. The red, that's part of the fun is red herring. It's important There's a little thing. disclaimer at the start that says um, not everything will be able to be substantiated, um, which is very important to note when you're playing this because sometimes like those little blue question marks just will, will remain unanswered. Um, yeah, I that's guess the fact that there's only... Sorry, what were you going to say? I was going to say, that's also part of being a, a real detective. You know, it's, it's, it's you're getting stuff wrong and going down the completely wrong alleyways where you think you're right and then you score nothing else. It's not all this linear story where you just held hand through this uh, narrative, I guess. 
Yeah, it's, it's not so unforgiving though, there's a, there's a hint system and there should be hopefully enough clues in the dialogue that if you pay attention you you will get you'll get there. If you don't pay attention you're you're knackered though. It's like you really have to be uh that's why Justin's stuck now because he's been listening to us hey, instead of I'm not quick. <laughs> I know exactly what I'm doing. Um yeah, there was a very funny Apple uh review on the because it's, uh, it's on mobile as well. If you have an iPhone you can play more information on that. Um and he could be at least complaining that all the people that are that they're reviewing saying they had trouble or are stupid and they don't read books. <laughs> um, it's, it's a game only for smart people. <laughs> I was like, listen, right? <laughs> That's very nice of you to say, but please, uh, they're all, they're all trying their absolute best. Um, <laughs> Yeah, yeah it, so it is one where you, you definitely need to, to pay attention. I think that that also kind of goes into how we've we've worked, kind of uh, the mind map and uh, conversations. Um, so it's, it's very much about okay, what what did this person say? How does that relate to the uh, the other evidence that that um, uh, I've gathered? So, for example, we're talking about um, the the strain on on Frank's marriage. Um, now, this will um, go into uh, our mind map, and we'll now have the chance to find uh, a bit of a discrepancy here. Um, so we'll see that we have uh, Frank's wife was always asking uh, Nadine, his secretary, where Daniels was. Um, now she has told us that no one knew where uh, Daniels was um, when he cancelled this this event that he was planning to go to. But she's also told us that the wife was always asking. So that may be uh, a connection. So let me just try it and see if there's anything. New dialogue unlock, and so the conversation uh, proceeds. So yeah, you need to you need to be kind of paying attention. Um, that there's a kind of um, uh, I don't want to say things get exponentially harder. If you don't pay attention, they do. But the more nodes you have, the more new evidence uh, can become uh, more challenging when you're trying to look at everything from a a, a fresh perspective. But if you're understanding. Um, the story, what's coming into your mind map, as soon as you get something new, you'll have a, an understanding of how that might fit in uh, to the rest of your evidence. Well, yeah, because if you look at a top down, you don't really have an organization of what's going on. It's just a bunch of things. Um, and it can be hard to, to pinpoint that kind of thing. Uh, great. Well, the last part is the, uh, the one thing I want to talk about was the most, uh, the, the highest section of, of, I don't want to spoil anything, but. Um, but one thing often people know is is the ethical dilemmas within the game. So we say in the in a lot of the Steam pages that it's about blurring the, the lines between right and wrong. And I imagine at the start of these, it's a pretty standard detective experience where you're trying to understand evidence, trying to understand the facts, trying to figure out who's lying, who's telling the truth. Um, but when it comes to the end about what you actually do and how you present your case and the nuance of these cases, it can become quite complicated. Uh, Romano, like, how do you build things like that to make that be kind of uncomfortable for the player to figure out? I guess I found this quite hard because I don't actually have any ethical dilemmas in real life. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you could say you don't have any ethics. I was like, excuse me, Romano, what do you mean? <laughs> none, none whatsoever. <laughs> um, yeah, I guess the problem with something like uh, decision making in games is that you, it can quickly spiral out of control if you have too much friction. So instead of decisions that change what happens in the game, we kind of went for ethical decisions that change how you feel about your character and it's the, the decisions kind of affect your, yeah, I guess your impression of the character and what kind of detective you want to be. Um, so yeah, it's really hard to do without spoilers, but I guess it, it's, it opens up interesting ethical questions about police work and <laughs> justice in general. The, um, the justice system is famously not flawed um, and never goes wrong in any well, way. I, I think, you know, it, I suppose it's less about... Well, you know, we're not kind of really commenting on uh, the justice system, you know, kind of encouraging people to like, you know, become Batman. Um, <laughs> but there, there's an opportunity through the mind map system where, and through, you know, being a participant in that story, through investigating 
quite a few elements of uh, the story around the crime. Uh, there, there's an interesting kind of uh, challenge for the player to then, you know, make a judgment, um, which uh, I suppose you know our, our criminal justice system does uh, need to make. Um, but we really wanted to uh, wanted players to understand all of context around these crimes. So to understand that crime is never simple and it's it's never really black and white. It's not just like this person. Uh, was evil and this person is is good um this is a, a, a bit of a spoiler i guess we don't have a serial killer in the game um that's not a really interesting crime for us um it's not it's not at all interesting from a narrative perspective that you know figure out where this this person is going to strike next um because of the evidence he's left what we'd rather do is look at this person who murdered someone else and why did they murder what led up to that um, uh, what's the story of the person who was murdered uh, and then asking uh, the player to now you understand the story uh, make some form of uh, of judgment uh, on that so yeah there was there was a bit of an opportunity there um, for us to, to pose some questions uh, to the player I suppose that when it comes to serial killers it's more about the serial killer instead of the, the victim when it comes to a singular crime it's all about the victim the victim's family the yeah. victim's friends yeah and you that's get right. to know this character just make it quite tough um yeah very interesting uh i that was all the, the questions i had but the final i wanted to ask um now that this game is coming out at an undisclosed date um and working on more game in the future what did you learn from modern risk machine when it comes to uh, making future games and what would you want from detective games to learn from modern mystery machine so um yeah you know we we learned we learned a lot um i think um we through this intersection of of mind map and um uh, story progression um one of our our first thoughts was what more can we do with this what what other stories can we tell through this? Even, you know, what other time periods can we do? Um, what particular um, types of detectives um, really lend themselves to this deductive um, uh, type of uh, mystery solving? And so um, looking forward, our next project does, um, uh, does explore, uh, you know, a detective focused on uh, deduction, uh, focused on a number of suspects, keeping those suspects the same. In in Murder Mystery Machine, we took this episodic approach where every every episode you're looking at something new, and we wanted the opportunity to have more um, uh, continuation through and and more in depth exploration into a single mystery. Uh, Murder Mystery Machine does uh, start adding connections throughout these um, uh, various episodes, which was really fun to, uh, and I'm sure Romano uh, on, on the last episode uh, can attest that it was very fun to to write um, all those connections and, and going back to the to the first episode when we're looking at episode eight. Um, but, you know, going forward, um, we have been looking at different ways to um, approach storytelling um, using the system. Um, in terms of you know learnings for the the other you know to the to the wider genre, I suppose I don't want to be too um, kind of uh, high and mighty about this. Yeah, but like, like we're not we're not claiming that we're the greatest <laughs> you ever made. But um, I guess for, for think about the small developers, people who are, are just starting to make games and want to make a detective game. So I I think that we wanted to make a contribution to the detective genre, and and are excited to see others other contributions as well that focus on that core deduction principle what are the ways that we can represent uh deduction because the human brain is incredibly complex and we make connections in in a lot of different ways we recognize patterns in a lot of different ways and that's also something where you know for example ai is a is a real struggle to recreate um uh, how humans think because there's a lot going on. And then how you represent uh, players' thoughts um, in game as a detective is incredibly challenging. And there's a lot of ways to do it. So we're kind of excited to see, excited to see um, how other games do it. Um, 
are there other methods that, that we can expose um, detectives making deductions? Because, you know, obviously they are. Um, and there already have been different ones, for example, construction sentences, looking at language. Um, but yeah, we're, we're kind of interested to see how the how the genre continues to evolve. Ravana, do you want to add anything to that? Yeah, <clears throat> I mean, just specifically about this mind map approach, it's the, the I was saying earlier on, kind of like the gameplay and the story are really tightly coupled. Like it's, I think it really works out well for the player because the they are they feel like they're playing the story. It's a nightmare for game dev, like really hard <laughs> to, if you want to change something, you're just like tearing up what you've written or like it's, 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 um, really difficult to design. Um, not so bad for the right, from the writing point of view, but to try and actually design puzzles around this and make sure the player isn't going to get lost. Like you're constantly second guessing what people are going to think. And, and sometimes you'll write it out people We'll be like, why can't I connect these two things? Like, okay, back to the start then. And you, it's just, it's, it's. You've got, uh, you've got mind maps within mind maps. Uh, you've got a mind map of all the mind maps, and those mind maps have to have mind maps within the mind maps. So. <laughs> I, I could show you some frightening pictures of mind maps <laughs> if you want to see them there. Let's see it. Um, yeah, I think it's just I, what I've learned about this is that it's hard. <laughs> I don't know <laughs> if I've learned like a really clever way of speeding up the process or not, I think maybe I know to do a less, less, um, finally, you know, like I wouldn't be like, ha here it is, it's done, I've put all the detail in, it's good to keep it as loose as possible before people, um, you know, play it and give you feedback on it, because if you kind of go too far with the detail, you're going to find yourself plucking it all out and starting again soon enough, especially with Justin, he's a <laughs> tricky customer. Not really. I just thought that would be a good way to end it. <laughs> Same in oh. Justin's face. And <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, thank you, Romana. Thank you, Justin. Uh, if you're watching this before the 22nd of June, then it's on Steam Next Fest, and you can download the demo, what we've been talking about. You can play the game for yourself with a little preview. If you're watching it past that or watching it at all, then go down and give us a wish list so you can give us an update for when the game's coming out. You can get our captions on news, and it helps us out a lot. And also, play the game when it comes out. It'll be a lot of good fun. Uh, anything else to add from, 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 from you folks? Yeah, I hope you enjoy and you know, we're always happy to chat. Um, uh, hop on to Steam Discussions um, and our, our new Discord uh, when it when it launches. And yeah, we're, we're <laughs> always happy to chat about uh, detective games, gameplay, uh, you know, your thoughts on, on Murder Mission Machine. Yeah, above me there'll be uh, an app name blazing g games and that'll be us who so give us a follow and hashtag motor machine uh, there's, uh, I'm, not sure where, I'm not sure where you are in the, the realms of things but uh, it stops us somewhere uh, but thank you very much for watching and uh we'll see you in the next if you're watching this live right now there's another one tomorrow at 3 p at 3 p.m bst where we're we'll talking with sean from our team about art and concept art and the development of, of motor machine so make sure to go and watch that as well but that's all for me thanks justin and thanks Romano. Awesome. Thanks. Bye-bye. Thank